How's everybody? How's everyone going? I'm honored to be up here today at uh, First Ignite Miami. I uh, met Alex when I moved down here. It was about a year ago, and uh, I'd asked him how many tech events there were, and, and I told him I just moved here from DC, and he said, well, we have about two or three a year, and being that up there, they have about two or three a week, I thought to myself, well, that's a problem, and I hope that all of us today can fix that problem. We can start having some more of these. So I hope that this is the catalyst to start mu something much, much, much bigger than, uh, <clears throat> than just having this one event, because I'd like to see you all again a lot more. So I want to thank you. I want to thank Alex. I want to thank Lori, Janie, and everyone for putting this together. I know how hard it is to organize these types of events. I've been to several nights up in Baltimore, uh, D.C., and some other places. It's a lot of work, and, uh, and I appreciate it very much. So as you know, my name is Adam Bolt, and uh, I am basically an innovator, and I've done a lot of innovation. And uh, when I started out down here, actually, it was just next door at an ad agency. And uh, I started doing a lot of interactive agency work, um, a lot of, on, on the LAMP stack. And uh, most built hundreds and hundreds of different uh, digital experiences for a variety of different clients. And I really was interested in innovation. I really wanted to create something amazing. And I, my first my first project that I started on was uh, a credit card, something to stop uh, basically fraud on the internet. And I thought to myself, well, w why don't I create four patents and why don't I stop, stop fraud on the internet? And I built this big business plan. Well, you know what? It was worthless. It didn't mean shit because I realized that at the end of the day, it costs more to manufacture a card than it costs to insure the fraud. So I didn't know. And then one day I was working and I went down for a client meeting down in Cancun and didn't think anything of it. And I was just minding my own business, doing work as I was supposed to. And I realized my passport had expired. So I thought, wow, there's no easy way to get a passport. Built a little website. It was called RushMyPassport.com. And next thing I knew, we became one of the largest passport expediters in the country. We are right now. So. The point of the the point is is that I didn't plan for it. So this business plan, throw it out the window. It didn't make a difference, you know. So I was I, I, I was named the Passport Pro, and I had and I had no plan. It just happened because I came up with a simple concept and I innovated. So that segued into D.C., where I, I entered into the first federal uh, or the first innovation contest in D.C. I was up against some real smart guys, developers that could outsmart me, okay? And I didn't know what to do, so 500 Red Bulls later, I figured it out. I said, you know what? I said, they're smarter than me, so I'm going to give the government what they want. And I did. I gave them something really simple. It wasn't complex, and I won first prize. And that's uh, Obama's... Chief Information Officer uh, uh, giving me the first prize over there. So I didn't do anything complicated, okay? I gave them what they wanted, and that's what innovation is about. So I was invited to speak at the World Bank, and, uh, and I got to help others show how, how to use these skill sets to, uh, to basically promote them globally, and it was, it was a really exciting experience for me. When, um, when I moved on to the next industry, it was the automotive industry, and I wanted to basically be different. I wanted to be a techie. I was like, I'm going to show them all these cool things. But at the end of the day, I realized they, they wanted one thing, they, what they knew. So, you know, they thought she was tweet, and, uh, and we had a tweet up. So, and it worked really, 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 really well. But... The truth behind innovation is, you know, knowing where to be, where to start out, and, and this basically breaks it down. You can be at the bleeding edge or at the cutting edge. And I always wanted to be at the bleeding edge, but I realized the cutting edge is actually the most successful place to be. And these are three examples of, you can ask yourself, who would you like to be of these? So it's, a, it's pretty easy to figure that out. Sometimes it's easier to be on the cutting edge and take what the bleeding edge person did and make it better. But 
innovation is not always about being successful finan financially. It's about achieving what you want, what you're passionate about. And when the BP oil spill hit, I went on Kickstarter and I found another like-minded person. His name was Jeffrey. He was an MIT student and we, no one believed in his, an idea, in his idea except, so I funded uh, with, with MIT um, basically a bunch of balloons, uh, high altitude kites, and crowdsourced the, uh, enough people to go walk the entire Gulf Coast. And we built open source imagery uh, of, the, of the oil spill, which is being used still to, to, to today. It's 10 times a higher resolution than, than that of NASA. So remember, when you want to innovate, so be bold, be different, don't let anybody stop you, okay? There is nothing that's impossible, and innovation doesn't have anything to do with money. So don't let anybody hold you back, okay? Do whatever you want, anything's possible, just imagine it, and it, and it can be done.